the views and opinions, and otherwise snarky remarks, in this podcast are solely those of our highly motivated and somewhat goofy commentators. They do not represent the opinions of Fairchild Air Force Base leadership, the 92nd Public Affairs Office, or the United States Air Force. Air power. Any reference to commercial products, companies, or services does not imply federal endorsement. You've been warned. Thank you, that was beautiful. I'm Staff Sergeant Benjamin W. Stratton, and... I'm Captain David A. Leopis. And we're about to fuel your connection with Fairchild's weekly podcast, The The Boom. Boom. This week on The Boom, we'll talk about base happenings, volunteer opportunities, dancing classes, the link between social media and depression, and one airman who may be going to Mars. So stay tuned. Just uh, hang on one second, I gotta check the boom. Come on! Ready for your local happenings? I know I am. All right, so commemorate the International Holocaust Remembrance Day at the Red Morgan Center Ballroom, Thursday, April 16th at 2 p.m. It's gonna be a great historical time. Follow that up the next day with the Sapper Run on April 17th, starting at 7 a.m. in Miller Park. For more information... Click here. <laughs> yeah. That's or, what it says on my iPad. Uh, or just call Mrs. Bradshaw. Ready for a volunteer dog walk? I know I might be. Do you love dogs and cats? Well, now you can get your pet fix on your own schedule right here on base. And without having to actually own one yourself. Yeah. Benefits. Yeah. Don't have to pay for those medical expenses, all that food, all that. All you have to do is pay for the attention with your time. So come out to take your tails and volunteer to walk a dog or just play with a little kitty cat. I know that's what Captain's all about. Take your tails has day and overnight stay options. So there is always someone there for you to play with. Call take your tails at 247-4699 for details. Social dance. I am... Well, if I liked it to dance, which I don't, I would go to this because I'm terrible at it, which is probably because I'm not really favorable towards it, so I haven't taken the time to learn it. But if I did want to learn it, in 10 weeks, I could learn the basics of the waltz, the foxtrot, the cha-cha, and swing. So a couple folks will be teaching social etiquette, musicality, posture, and simple steps you can use to start dancing right away if you have never danced before. Partner is not required. So no more, what's that called? The sprinkler, or the... He was just actually doing the motion. Yeah. I don't know if you could hear his swish of his uniform. If he was wearing (laughs) PT gear, you would have definitely heard it. So the social dance introduction is April 7th through June 16th at the Spokane Falls Community College. And you can go on the website to find out more information or call 509-328-2594. Rummage sales season. I love rummage sales. What's your favorite part about rummage sales? Finding the deals, man. It's the deals. Not the treasures? Like the random pocket watch that may be worth $1,000 and the owners know nothing about it? Or That's, the coins? That would be a deal. Uh-huh. See? Look at you. It's 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 awesome. I love... my my Most of my house is furnished with garage sale slash rummage sale slash Craigslist items. I suppose that's what happens when you have five kids. Because you never know when that couch is going to come in handy to hide behind or underneath in the event of some sort of natural disaster or some crazy event. I don't know why you would... Segue? Yeah, that was an attempt at a segue into <laughs> America's prepare Be smart, take part, prepare. So the Federal Emergency Management Agency, FEMA, has been tasked to get everybody geared up for America's prepare It's a grassroots campaign for action to get people better prepared for emergencies. There are easy-to-use tools for families, organizations, and communities for many common hazards such as tornadoes, earthquakes, and floods. And there are ways to participate. You can download alerts and warnings. You can hold drills in your house uh, with your family. You can collect critical documents, find out different ways that you can have little emergency kits ready and everything like that. So what kind of things do we have around here at Fairchild Air Force Base? Earthquakes. That are so small you can't feel them? Well, hopefully. Blizzards. No, particularly. No blizzards this year, though. No, I guess I was gone for most of the winter. Stuck in Minot in Maryland. Which you did have blizzards. Yeah. Yeah, were you prepared? Uh, I was. I don't know about the rest of the people on the road. Actually, they closed um, the base down. I was I was at training in Maryland for a couple months, and uh, they got an inch of snow. And they're like, oh, we can't handle this. 
Let's close the base down. Shut shut it down. Shut it down. Wait. Don't, don't drive in this. You don't know how, but I do. I think about, what is it, about 20? No. It's got to be 30-something years ago now. This base actually got an inch of ash. You remember that? I wasn't born yet. But my parents were not living very far from Mount St. Helens when it erupted. And I know that the ash fall definitely impacted Fairchild Air Force Base. There's pictures of it. I've read the history. And that's one thing that we here in the Pacific Northwest do have to kind of think about. Because there are quite a few volcanoes not too far from us. So there's nothing crazy active. They're not predicting that anything's going to blow anytime soon. But you just never know. They weren't really thinking Mount St. Helens was going to do a whole lot either. And then Kablaoui. How about Yellowstone? That's gonna, that's overdue by a few hundred years. That's true. That's true. <laughs> and that one could be pretty uh, cataclysmic. Is that a good word for it? Yeah, yeah, we'll go with that. Take out basically the western United States. Yeah, So, but really here at Fairchild Air Force Base, I think the only real significant danger that we have, weather or nat natural disaster-wise, would probably be wildfire. Especially in a year like this where there's not a whole lot of snowpack and there's I remember last year there was a lot of fires in the forest around here and there was a lot of smoke but wildfires can creep up and you got to keep the grass cut around your house and all that kind of stuff and keep the pine needles off the ground if you got trees and things like that so just little things you can do to prepare to prevent that kind of stuff from affecting you as much that's right remember only you can prevent forest fires that's right and only you can log on to ready.gov to check out more Ready.gov has all kinds of information. It's great. Take some time to check it out. Speaking of preparing, did you guys hear about that uh, airman who um, might be going to Mars? Yeah, so I, I was always told that men are from Mars and women are from Venus, but apparently there might be a woman from Mars because this female airman is looking to be a part of this. She made the final hundred cut, so she's now down into the – they're going to take four out of this hundred, so – so she's going to try to get up and go on to a mission to Mars. What would you do if you went to Mars, Captain? I would take Mars chocolate bars with me. It would be <laughs> ironic. <laughs> what? <laughs> and they'd melt. Or would they? Is Mars colder than? Well, no, because I'd take M&Ms, and those are made by Mars, and they melt in your mouth, not in your hand. <laughs> so Tech Sergeant Carmen Paul is leaving her husband behind. What would you do if you, uh, I mean... I wouldn't sign up. I'm married. That's a, that's a single person thing to do. I, I'm not I'm not sure how that's going to work. I'm not just going to annul their marriage. Like, if you take off from Mars, this thing's over, and I'm going to move on. Or do, are they going to stay committed and, you know, use Skype to, to talk? I, I don't know. I, can you Skype from Mars? Do we know yet? We can communicate. I know that it, I know that it takes some time for the, the rover information to get back to the... NASA. So he could like wish her a happy anniversary six months in advance and then it'd get there in time to <laughs> talk about preparing for your anniversary. That's right. <laughs> Can't forget that one. Can't really ship her flowers though. Speaking of trying to stay connected, social media sites such as Facebook and Twitter and so forth have revolutionized the way we stay connected with new and old friends. But it looks like Facebook might be face palm for a lot of people. <laughs> SMH Hashtag What does SMH even stand for? Shaking my head uh, Like I've never known all this time what SMH stood for I'm shaking my head right now at him <laughs> Super manly heritage So this is the finding of University of Houston researcher My Lai Steers As she discovered this kind of social comparison Paired with the amount of time spent on social media sites may be linked to depressive symptoms. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. <laughs> Her last name is Steers, and she's from Texas? <laughs> That's cool. Next time you see your friends get married on Facebook and you're still single, don't cry about it. Be happy for them. Send them a card. Send them a gift or something. Or post on their Facebook wall and say, Congratulations! I wish I was as happy as you. Your time shall come. Your time shall come. I'm married. Happily so. Oh, you just broke all the ladies' hearts out there, Sergeant Stratton. I know, I know. Sorry, ladies. Um, I'm taken. So anyway, Captain, did you hear about how the U.S. Air Force Honor Guard preps their airmen for anything? Yes, we've, uh, we've looked at different technologies and weapons and tactics over the years in the Air Force to try to find the best way to train our airmen for anything that may come their way. And so... In times of sequestration and looking for 
lower budget options um, for how to, to train our airmen, uh, the Honor Guard has found one technique to be effective in trying to have our airmen learn how to maintain their composure and their military bearing in all circumstances. And they are now using... Rubber chicken, you're the one. <laughs> Rubber chickens. <laughs> There's a video on HuffingtonPost.com that shows an airman being tested with a rubber chicken, and you can see the look on his face. He's obviously trying not to laugh. I remember the days in basic training when they would try to get you to, to lose your composure. And one time we had an airman had to count like, uh, what's the count on Sesame Street? When he was doing his push-ups, he had to go one, ah, 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 two, ah, ah, ah. And then anybody that started laughing because of that, they all had to get on their face and start doing push-ups, too. Ah, ah, ah. It was great. Well, that's about all we've got time for today, folks. You don't want to talk about rubber chickens anymore? I'm sorry. You know, rubber chickens are great and all, but um, rubber ducky, you're the one. That's really how the song goes. All right, Ernie. <laughs> okay, Bert. Well, this is Bert and Ernie signing off, fueling your connection with Fairchild's weekly podcast, Taboo!